Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about long acting injectable Respiridon. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about a long acting injectable Respiridon. What is the pharmacokinetics? What are the side effects? How it is given? What is the dosage? And also, what does the recent research say about long-acting Respiridon injectable? Respiridon long-acting is available in two types. One is intramuscular injection. Another one is a subcutaneous injection. Let's understand about the intramuscular injection. Here it is a new technology where Respiridon is suspended in a micro-encapsulated in a polymer which is biodegradable and 75-25 polyactide co-glycolide is the microsphere. It is also called as PLGA. Here, the respiridon is suspended in this microsphere polymer. Here, the respiridon is slowly released through diffusion. This is used in intramuscular injection which is given once in two weeks. The second one is subcutaneous injection and here it is used as a RBP 7000. This involves suspending respiridone molecule in a biodegradable polymer matrix. Fusion and another by gel formation. In this method, it is given as a subcutaneous injection once a month. However, the subcutaneous injection is not marketed in India. Only the intramuscular injection is marketed. Let's understand this long-acting respiridone injection which is given intramuscular. That is microsphere technology. Respiridone is the first second generation antipsychotics which was available as a depot preparation. Here the respiridone molecule is suspended in a microsphere of a polymer. This remains stable over a period of 1 to 21 days. Here, the respiridone is released slowly through diffusion. This microsphere polymer is nothing but 75-25 glycolide or lactide matrix. After 21 days, the respiridone increases its diffusion, enters into the circulation and acts in the brain. By the end of 48 days, this polymer gets eroded and the complete absorption of respiridone is occurred and metabolized. As I mentioned, respiridone 75-25 is available for IM injection only and the dosage which are available is 12.5 mg, 25 mg, 37.5 mg and 50 mg and it is given intramuscularly. Subcutaneous injection is not available in India and however it is available in the international market. It is available in two dosages, 90 mg and 120 mg given once a month subcutaneously. Now let's discuss about how to give Respiridon long acting injectable intramuscularly which is available in India. Respiridon is available in three formats. One is oral and here the tablets are available in 0.5 mg, 1 mg, 2 mg, 3 mg and 4 mg. The tablets are given once a daily. The next one is long acting injectable respiridone given intramuscularly. Here it is available as a veil in 12.5 mg, 25 mg, 37.5 mg and 50 mg. Subcutaneous which is not marketed in India is available in only two well that is 90 mg and 120 mg. Let's understand how long acting respiridone is given. When you are giving IM injections you will start with 12.5 mg and you will give two dosage of 12.5 mg and you will increment only after one month to 25 mg. Suppose you want to increase further you need to give two dosage of 25 mg two weeks apart that means after one month the increment is done. Whenever you are giving IM injection, concomitant oral medication is very essential. 
whereas in subcutaneous injection you will give 90 mg and 120 mg only if the patient requires higher dosage avoid subcutaneous dosage in subcutaneous concomitant oral medication is not required let's discuss about im long acting injection on a, on the zero day you will give 12.5 mg of long acting risperidone intramuscularly the next dosage after 2 weeks will be the same dosage 12.5 mg if there is no response you can increase it to 25 mg and further you need to give the same dosage after 2 weeks 25 mg after 1 month that is if you want to increment then you will be giving 37.5 mg respiratory long acting if you think that the patient has not responded if you want to increment you need to give 37.5 mg again and then after 1 month you will be giving 50 mg im dosage please remember whenever you are giving intramuscular injection for at least 3 to 4 weeks you have to give concomitant oral medication and in respiratory intramuscular injection the incrementing to the next dosage should occur once a month that is after every two dosage which the respiratory intramuscular is given two weeks once let's look into the conversion if the patient is receiving 2 mg of oral respiratory you will start with 12.5 mg if the patient is receiving 4 mg you will you will start with 25 mg intramuscular if the patient is on 6 mg you will be giving 37.5 mg im if the patient is on 8 mg you will be starting with 50 mg of intramuscular every 2 weeks suppose if you decide to go with subcutaneous if the patient is receiving 2 mg orally you will give 90 mg of subcutaneous injection monthly if the patient is on 4 mg you will give 120 mg subcutaneous monthly if the patient is on either 6 mg or 8 mg do not give subcutaneous you need to give only intramuscular every 2 weeks once all intramuscular requires concomitant oral medication subcutaneous does not require concomitant oral medication the dose escalation in intramuscular should occur once in a month that is after every 2 dosages of intramuscular injection here in intramuscular injection you need to give concomitant oral medication because if you look at this graph the green line indicates the oral medication and fluctuation in the plasma the plasma concentration level becomes constant only after 3 to 4 weeks that means up to 4 weeks you need to give concomitant oral medication when you are giving im injection let's discuss about subcutaneous respiratory injection here this is not marketed in india but however we will discuss about subcutaneous respiratory injection when the patient is on a 2 mg of oral tablet you will be giving 90 mg of respiratory long acting once a month if the patient is on 4 mg you will give 120 mg long acting respiratory subcutaneously if the patient is on 6 or 8 mg avoid giving subcutaneous they should be given intramuscular every 2 weeks once as i mentioned earlier subcutaneous does not require concomitant oral medications suppose if you are shifting from respiratory long acting to long acting paliperidone how to do that and why should we do that please understand paliperidone is an metabolite of respiratory and paliperidone has less side effects when compared to respiratory paliperidone is available as monthly 3 months once and 6 months once im injection hence it is advisable to shift over to paliperidone if the patient requires for long duration of medications not only that it can be given im and the cost of paliperidone injection especially in the eastern world it is economical than respiratory injection let's look into the conversion if the patient is on long acting im respiratory 25 mg every 2 weeks you will shift over to 50 mg every month if the patient is on 
respiridone 37.5 mg every 2 weeks then you will give long acting paliperidone 75 mg every month if the patient is receiving respiridone every 2 weeks 50 mg then you will be giving paliperidone 100 mg every month so my dear friends it is easy to give once a month and many if once in 3 months paliperidone is available and it is it is advisable to shift over every 3 months once now let's look into the side effects of respiridone long acting injectables the commonest is prolactin elevation weight gain parkinsonism sedation hypotension akathisia rarely nms and pain at the site of injection few of the respiridone injection patients may require anticholinergic drugs that is you need to consider on case by case basis let's look into the evidence if you are giving long acting respiridone in first episode psychosis what does the research evidence says this is an important article which was published in 2019 in the international clinical psychopharmacology journal the researchers were seligur and segar they published this article titled as long acting injectable second generation antipsychotics in first episode psychosis a narrative review when they did the review they found approximately 77 articles with regard to second generation long acting injectables and they applied inclusion criteria only 5 articles were selected they were published in 2008 by emsley and his colleagues in 2008 kim and his colleagues the other one was weiden and his colleagues in 2009 and 2012 one was 3 months study and which was continued for 24 months was published and finally in 2015 soptonic also published the research all these research articles belong to respiridone long acting injectables none of the other second generation antipsychotics were considered in this review article because none of them met the inclusion criteria now let's look into the these articles if you look at these articles as i mentioned all of them are based on long acting respiridone and if you look at the follow up period it extends from 12 months to 24 months that is 1 to 2 years of follow up study is done if you look at the results since the result is applicable only for long acting respiridone and the authors concluded long acting respiridone had a significant advantage over oral antipsychotics in first episode psychosis and they also concluded long acting respiridone improves adherence to the medication and preventing the worsening of symptoms relapse and rehospit rehospitalization and this was a significant findings as per the study now let's look into the long acting injectable respiridone in schizophrenia a fields and his colleagues published an article titled as long term efficacy and safety of once a month long acting respiridone in the treatment of schizophrenia results from 12 months open label extension study this study was published in schizophrenia research 2022 what was the objective of the study to evaluate the long term efficacy safety and tolerability of the long acting respiridone in patient with schizophrenia a multi center open label extension of prisma 3 study was conducted this is how the study design looks it had two arms one is double blind phase another is de novo of patients in the double blind phase the one arm consisted of placebo and the other one with respiridone injection so the placebo arm was called as unstable patients which had 55 stabilized patients on respiridone injection were 119 and the patients who were on oral medications were considered as stable patients total number of the patients who are enrolled into the 
स्टडी वेयर टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन लेट्स लुक इन टू द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस स्टडी आथस कंक्लूडेड लॉन्ग एक्टिंग रेस्पिरोडॉन इज एन एफेक्टिव सेफ एंड वेल टॉलरेटेड लॉन्ग टर्म ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ स्किजोफ्रेनिया इन एडल्ट रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द इनिशियल डिसिसिवियरिटी और whether the patients were previously stated with respiridone during an acute exacerbation or switch to or from stable dose of oral respiridone to injection so my dear friends this study clearly indicated long acting injectable respiridone was safe and effective in schizophrenia now let's look into the long acting respiridone in bipolar disorder there was a study which was published by carmatine and his colleagues in 2019 in a journal called as cns drug the title of the study was long acting injectable second generation atypical antipsychotics for the management of bipolar disorder a systematic review in this study the authors reviewed all different types of studies control trials observational studies case series and case reports with regard to efficacy of second generation long acting injectables 37 study met the criteria where long acting injectables were given for bipolar disorder treatment and when they analyzed the studies discussed about four long acting second generation injectables one was respiridone second one was aripiprazole third one was paliperidone and fourth one was valanzapine what was the results second generation long acting antipsychotics particularly respiridone and aripiprazole were found to be very safe and very effective whereas none of the studies looked into olanzapine and paliperidone and there is some preliminary evidence the author suggested suppose the patient does not respond to oral medication it is worthwhile trying injectables they also suggested if the patient is having rapid cycling please do try either respiridone or aripiprazole long acting injectables there was no data available for olanzapine and paliperidone to conclude my dear friends the even the european neuropsychopharmacology consensus conferences recommended that any patient for whom long term antipsychotic treatment is indicated should consider depo preparation further please weigh the risk versus benefit providing parenteral injection further the long acting respiridone administered once in every 2 weeks is effective safe and well tolerated in patient with schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder long acting injectable respiridone improves compliance to medication and outcome of schizophrenia Please remember whenever you are giving 2 mg of oral respiridone start im 12.5 mg or else 90 mg of subcutaneous injection monthly if you are giving oral 4 mg of respiridone you can shift to 25 mg im every 2 weeks or else 120 mg subcutaneous if the patient is receiving oral 6 mg or 8 mg please don't give subcutaneous they require im injections for 6 mg you will give 37.5 mg every 2 weeks once for 8 mg you will give 50 mg im every 2 weeks once whenever the patient is receiving intramuscular injection for the first 3 to 4 weeks concomitant oral medication has to be given for subcutaneous injection concomitant oral medication is not required im preparations when you are giving the increment should occur after every two dosages that means every month the increment should be done not very fast this is about long acting respiridone my dear friends thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe